What's going on everybody, C4, welcome back to the channel, today we're here for a new Madden 23 realistic rebuild where we are going to take control of the Carolina Panthers in light of their blockbuster trade that happened yesterday where they sent a first round pick, ninth overall in 2023, a first round pick in 2024, a second round pick in 2023, a second round pick in 2024, and star wide receiver dj Moore to the chicago bears to get the number one overall pick in the 2023 draft to go on and land their franchise quarterback so take a look at our roster we don't really have a quarterback it's not a matt corral we're, we're clearly going to be drafting a quarterback and i get a decision to make i don't know which direction i want to go i did a mock draft yesterday i also did a rebuild yesterday of the seattle seahawks go check that out don't like releasing rebuilds this close to one another but i just I haven't done a Panthers rebuild style video because they were a main channel franchise. And honestly, I really just want to get this one done. And I want to start recording a Chicago Bears rebuild to do the core signing side of this trade. So if you guys do want to see a Chicago Bears rebuild, maybe hit 500 likes on today's video. And maybe I'll spend all weekend recording it. And it'll be out to you guys. Maybe not tomorrow, but it might be out first thing on Monday morning. But take a look at this Carolina Panthers roster it's a rebuild. It is definitely a rebuild. No more Christian McCaffrey of Chupa Hopper as our top uh, running back. Our skill position players, I mean, we all know you can move Ian Thomas to fullback and he's an absolute monster. But, you know, we got Tommy Tremble at tight end. He is a dev trait. You got LaVisca Chanel at wide receiver. He is a dev trait. But not much at wide out going on here. We might have to dip into free agency. Offensive line's not too shabby. Taylor Moten, turnstile Moten. I got to try and get my my mind around these guys that suck in our franchise and just try to give them a uh, you know a real fresh slate because taylor Bolton was garbage but he's 84 star dev we got to utilize that we lost corvette 81 star dev guard and then icky aquano 77 superstar dev left tackle he has got to develop he has to be a monster that's at least one great starting piece on this offense is we have what should be a franchise left tackle take a look at the defense uh we're gonna be changing up the scheme here uh they got uh, evero from the Denver Broncos, and they're going to be rocking in a 3-4. So let's just kind of get a look at what that might look like next year for the Carolina Panthers. So here's kind of how I'm thinking the defense will line up. I, You know, Derek Brown, I don't think you're going to use him as a true nose tackle. I think you can use that athleticism, put him on the outside as a little bit of a pass rusher. Does take a little bit of a rating hit, but I think it's going to be best for the squad. Then we can just kind of go in the offseason knowing we need a nose, knowing we need another front three. Brian Burns and Gross Matos on the edge. We're going to go Frankie Luvu and Shaq Thompson in the middle of the defense with Chin and Woods at safety. We got J.C. Horn, C.J. Henderson, and obviously the great Keith Taylor at corner three. I'm going to be in no rush to try to upgrade there. Keith Taylor season, baby. You know it's full and live and active. But I, I think this is a defense that can shift to a 3-4 and not have to just completely reinvent the way they do. I think the front, the best of the linebackers are solid now. I think your safeties are decent for the time being. I think you have two very good outside corners. Not a whole lot of pieces. I'm, I'm more worried about, I think we have more work to do on the offensive side of the ball. But this is definitely going to be a full-on rebuild. There is a lot of work that needs to get done on both sides of the ball. So let's get into it. And it all starts with free agency. But ultimately, who are we going to draft as the number one pick in 2023? So for free agency, gonna go kind of honestly realistic. Paris Campbell to come over with Frank Reich. Draymond Jones come over with Evero. Fits our scheme as well on that front three of the defensive line. I'm also gonna throw an offer at Ben Powers, 81, 27 years old at the guard spot. So hopefully we can get at least two of the three. We did. We got Draymond Jones and Ben Powers, which is a great start. Paris Campbell, I didn't, you know, he's not a make or break. It's just more so of a, of a flyer that obviously fits. Frank Reich coming over front Indianapolis. We are desperate at wide receiver. And we all know we're going quarterback with the first round. But it's really, you know, as much as there's a decision of what quarterback we need to do, I think it's almost equally as important what Carolina does with the remainder of that draft. They have another pick in the second round. That has to be an absolute hit because there are so many holes on this team that we aren't going to be able to fill in our first free agency. And you don't want to put our rookie quarterback in a scenario of like, what Justin Fields went with and went through with the Chicago Bears of just no help whatsoever on the offensive side of the ball at skill position spots. So uh, we're very conscious of that. And again, I don't know if Paris Campbell moves that needle enough here for the Carolina Panthers. We're going to have to hit on the remaining draft picks that we do have to be able to contribute day one. So the time has come with the first overall pick in the 2023 NFL Draft. I'm not going to go with what I would do. 
And uh, hey, you know what? That leaves the door open that if they actually go out and draft Bryce Young, I can run this back to another rebuild with Bryce Young under the helm here for the Carolina Panthers. We're going to go with the Las Vegas favorite. And it's like an overwhelming favorite right now. And that is the Carolina Panthers traded all of those assets to secure the services of Ohio State quarterback C.J. Stroud. Welcome to Carolina. All right, so we're at pick nine in the second round. And this is where we need to just to make the most out of it. We have a bunch of positions that need that we still... I need a nose tackle. I need a starting nose tackle. And looking at what's available. We have Mozzie Smith, but I've used him in the last couple of rebuilds. And, you know, maybe we could wait for Ika. Maybe someone like Keanu Benton. Might not be a nose tackle in the traditional sense, but for Madden, it, it would be passable. So maybe we could wait for that in the third round. Uh, we also need a new starting center. And I think Smiths is solid. That's pretty good value there. But do I do we need center more so than any some of these other positions? Because we can wait. Jared Patterson's there. I mean, really, any of these draftable centers are probably going to be pretty close to a 70 overall. So we might be able to wait. We could also make an argument that we need a tight end. Musgrave, Darnell Washington, legitimate playmakers. But, you know, I, maybe we want to gamble on Tommy Tremble. We know the ceiling of Tommy Tremble. I was really hoping that Josh Downs was going to be here because it would have been cool to pair the North Carolina kid. Uh, we just used Zay Flowers in a rebuild uh, yesterday in the Seattle Seahawks rebuild. So I don't know how if I want to go back to that. Well, but I mean, look at these. Jalen Hyde could be interesting. That's an absolute burner, an absolute deep threat. Or we can look at running back. And of course, it's just not, not the value that I would like. I'd honestly rather wait and then have an all Canadian backfield of Chase Brown. And, and and Chuba Hubbard at this rate, I'd rather just see what Chuba Hubbard can do. There's not a lot of name value here at running back. Maybe something like Ty J Spears could be interesting. So I think all in all, I, I I think we go we get speedster. We go Jalen Hyatt at wide receiver, 96 speed, 97 acceleration. Can't teach that, but no dev trade. We're really fishing for a dev trade here. A guy with a little bit more upside at wideout. It's a little bit of a boring pick, but we do need a new starting center. So I'm going to get Jarrett Patterson here in the third round. We've drafted him uh, not too long ago. I think he's like a 70 overall. So it's a good starting and nice value in the third round. Ah, screw it. I'll break the mold. I want the all Canada backfield, but I want to also get a very fun player. Deuce Vaughn out of Kansas State. They ain't built like this. 5'6". I think he actually thinks he's 5'5". Five, five. But look at that. Look at that. Look at that playmaking ability. Absolute monster. Such a fun player. God damn it. Final pick of the draft of the seventh round. We got uh, Trivius Hodges Tomlinson. I think he's the nephew of the great Lady Tomlinson. Still available. Don't want to add pressure to Keith Taylor. But uh, hit a dev slot corner. Hmm. So take a look at our draft recap at 1-1. CJ Stroud. You're not going to complain about a 76 hidden dev quarterback. Uh, skill set. Very nice. Very well rounded. He's, you know, that's kind of CJ Stroud. That's what he is in this draft class. I think you are Bryce Young. I, I don't know. I don't want to get in that, that, that personal preference. I kind of think Bryce Young is the complete quarterback in this draft class. CJ Stroud is like a little lesser, but he's prototypical size. So maybe that's still some, that's still some form of value. Actually, we'll make him a team captain right now. We are ushering in a new era here in Carolina. And hopefully CJ Stroud can bring this team to a Super Bowl. We got Jalen Hyatt in the second round. The speedster, 74, normal dev trait. Again, would like to see that dev trait be a little bit higher, but I'm sure he's going to play a lot. It's going to be him, Paris Campbell, and LaVisca Chanel for our primary receivers in year one. And I'd love to see a healthy connection between CJ Stroud and Jalen Hyatt. We got Patterson, who's a 72. He's going to be a day one starter for us at center. Deuce Vaughn, 73 overall pick in the fourth round. You'll love seeing that. We got Rakeem Jarrett, 71 wide receiver in the fourth round. We got a nose tackle, Coburn from Texas. More so depth on the defensive line. And then Tomlinson pops with a dev trait. Only a 69 overall, but we might have to get him on the field. And we'll have to have Keith Taylor be more of a you know player coach type DB4. So here we go. Year one of the CJ Stroud in Carolina era. We're a 79 overall team, which is... I want to see flashes, honestly. But it's not the best. It's not like the, you know... So many people talk about when you draft a quarterback, it's almost the environment they're in more so than the talent they possess. And I don't know if we've done enough, at least in year one, to provide the support system around CJ Stroud for him to thrive. But we did the best we could. Uh, we got Chuba Hubbard and Deuce Vaughn in the backfield. You know, would love to see one of those guys get a dev trait, make the most of their opportunity. 
Uh, we got Paris Campbell, Louis Chanel, and we're going to go Jalen Hyatt as our top three wide receivers. Terrence Marshall, solid. But we'll probably go, you know, Visca in the slot because you really want to utilize the yard after catch ability, get him some easy touches, and we'll use Paris Campbell's speed and Jalen Hyatt's speed on the outside to be burners. Offensive line, we got a new starting center in Jared Patterson, which is serviceable. We signed Ben Powers in for HC. He's an 81. So I think all in all, actually, we did a good job on the offensive line. That is a serviceable offensive line. Should not be a weak spot. Uh, Tommy Tremble, much like these wide receivers and running backs, pretty much all of our skill position players have an opportunity to hit the ground running. They have some upside. They're going to be put in a position where they can go up dev trade. They're going to get a lot of touches. Hopefully someone makes the most out of that opportunity. On the defensive side of the ball, well, anytime you get a seventh round pick that's your starter at nose tackle, uh, you're going to feel a little uncertain. But Draymond Jones and Derek Brown kind of balance things out a little bit. All you got to do is play the run. Just play the run, please. Linebacking core, we got Gross Matto, Shaq Thompson, Frankie Louvu, and Brian Burns, which you feel pretty good about. Jeremy Chin and Xavier Woods at safety. J.C. Horn, C.J. Henderson, Hodges, Tomlinson in the slot, and obviously the great Keith Taylor make up our secondary. I just, I just want to see some promising things. I have no expectations of playoffs or anything like that. I just want to see this team show some flashes. I want maybe one or two guys to take a step up this year, maybe go up a dev trade that we can kind of build around for the remainder of this rebuild. All right, this could kind of be huge. We talked about I need some guys to break out. And going into week three, Chuba Hubbard has an opportunity to go up to a star dev with a good performance against the Green Bay Packers. Damn it. Second touchdown. Unfortunately, we did end up losing the game 27-23, but as you saw, we were able to get the two touchdowns for Chuba Hubbard. I think he had 81 yards on 17 carries, so that's good enough to get him up to a star dev trait. Also have a very big opportunity here ahead of a Seahawks matchup, a breakout scenario for CJ Stroud. Week six, we also have a breakout scenario this week for Derek Brown on the defensive line. So if we get a win and we put up some big numbers and we do get the win, 27-21. We'll start with the unlikely of the two. With Look at our rankings. I don't think we hit the dev, unfortunately, for CJ Stroud, but we end up getting the win. But look at that. We are through... Seven weeks, we're four and two. We have the number one offense in the NFL. We have the number five defense in the NFL. Uh, okay, and Derek Brown. Well, we didn't hit it for the quarterback. We did hit it for the D lineman. He is now a superstar dev. Let's go. So right from the midway point, we are tied for first in the NFC South with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers at five and three, easily above expectations. We have found out our dev trade for our quarterback in CJ Stroud, which was spoiled a little bit uh, with the breakout, but he is a star. Reasonable. That's a reasonable dev trade. Uh, we've luckily also hit on a dev trade scenario already in season for Chuba Hubbard, who's up to a star, and for Derek Brown, who is up to a superstar. Uh, we also, on top of a unfortunate not breakout scenario that we hit with CJ Stroud, we also had a similar circumstance for JC Horn. He had a dev trade scenario earlier in the year. Would have loved, because obviously we know what he did for us in our main channel, Carolina Panthers franchise mode, just how damn good he is. But we beat the Bucs week nine, 38-20, to kind of put ourselves in position. And look at that outstanding game from CJ Stroud. 264 yards passing, four touchdowns. Also, shout out to another rookie, Lucas Van Ness of the Packers with four sacks. And shout out Byron Jones coming out of retirement and staying in there in Miami. But I want to take a look at some contracts here. Again, we have, a, we have a decent salary cap, obviously, with $103 million, but we're also going to have to pay a lot of players. We do not want to have a lot of roster turnover. Again, I like gambling on our young players. Someone like Gross Matos, we could probably do a little bit better on the edge. Maybe he'll be more suited to a 4-3 front. Uh, I do like CJ Henderson. Maybe there's some bias coming in because he was so good for us in our main channel franchise, but we're going to offer. Let's see if we can get him four years, 18 mil, locked in for a dev trade corner. You'll take that every day of the week. We have Visca Chanel at wide receivers getting plenty of opportunities here. Don't want to overpay, but we'll see if something maybe like a three-year, $14 million, get him locked in. And that's still not that big of a commitment that we can't look at it, continuing to upgrade 
the wide receiver room. Frankie Lulu might not be the best scheme fit. Like he's, he can kind of rush them. He can kind of do it all at linebacker. So offer him a reasonable deal. And again, much like Vizca Chanel, if there's an upgrade to be had, it's not like we've committed an insane amount of money to him. Jeremy Chin, definitely a focal point of this team. Want him to be a part of this defense for this whole rebuild. So we'll get him locked in to a four-year deal. Uh, Shaq Thompson's getting up there in age a little bit. Maybe we'll see where, where it is at season's end, especially if he get, you know, gets that superstar dev trade or something like that because he's going to be likely our leading tackler. We will wait and see because that's still kind of expensive, and I don't really know if I want to get a 29-year-old to a four-year deal unless he goes up to that superstar. But here's the big contract. Brian Burns hopefully thriving in a 3-4 as an edge and face of this defense. Got to get him locked up as well. We have our second breakout for Chuba Hubbard. Three touchdowns or 150 total yards against the Bucks here in Week 15 after we kicked the shit out of the Saints 42-3. However, no players of the week, which is weird when you put up that big of a game. But this year could get us two games ahead of the Bucks for first place in the division. It's exactly what we do. 23-17 at 9-5. Looking at Chuba Hubbard and unfortunately had a solid game but did not get that superstar dev. And at the end of year one, we made the playoffs. Get to find out right away in the wildcard round who the true best team is in the NFC South. But we do have, first year under our belt, a NFC South title to our name. Year one of the Frank Reich. Can't be Reich. Reich, because whatever, it's a profanity. Frank Reich uh, did very well. Uh, I did look at our stats a couple weeks ago. There's only one real disappointing player, and we'll get to that in a second. Uh, CJ Stroud was pretty damn good. Fifth in touchdowns in the league, 4,400 yards, 35 touchdowns, 10 picks. An outstanding year from Chuba Hubbard, almost 1,400 yards, 15 touchdowns. Now, because we are still rocking and rolling with the Panthers playbook, Deuce Vaughn, not, you know, we drafted him as a weapon. He was a 73 rookie. Wanted to get him on the field, wanted to maximize that. 276 yards, five touchdowns, sure. But he's also the guy that was our receiving back. So we got that, du you know, Christian McCaffrey boost. 78 catches, almost 700 yards, four touchdowns. Like, that's honestly, if Deuce Vaughn's going to make it in the NFL, that's probably the kind of role he's going to play. So nine touchdowns for a rookie, really, really nice weapon. I'm glad that he can go off and Chuba Hubbard can still eat. It's a great one-two punch. And honestly, like, kind of looking at that, it's like, man, do we move someone like LaVisca Chanel to running back? Uh, probably not. Don't want to step on toes. Why don't we just appreciate all of them? Uh, Tommy Treble, you know, average year. Paris Campbell, honestly, a real nice season for him. 950 yards, seven touchdowns. But you love seeing Jalen Hyatt, the rookie, second-round pick. 91 catches, 1,100 yards, 12 touchdowns on the season for the big play wide receiver. Defensively, Shaq Thompson, over 100 tackles. Here's the bad news. Brian Burns did not get after the quarterback. Again, it's 3-4 playbooks. Fucking suck in Madden. Nothing else you can say about it. It's just not good. Rarely do they ever yield anything. Uh, in terms of ridiculous pressures, hell of a year for Derek Brown, but we're likely going to watch Brian Burns just, unless somehow, some way, puts it together next year. His X Factor is going to be gone. He's probably just going to continue to regress because three, four playbooks fucking suck. Five picks for Dante Jackson, lead the team. We got three for JC Horn, second place. Love seeing Keith Taylor down there with one pick. Yearly Awards MVP goes to Josh Allen. Okay, cool. CJ Stroud at nine. Love seeing that. Offense player goes to Cooper Cup. Defense player, there goes to Nick Bosa. Offensive rookie of the year goes to Jalen Hyatt. He's on that normal dev, so he's going to get that bump up. You could probably make the argument, though, you'd rather C.J. Stroud get that because that would pump him up to a superstar quarterback. Uh, Deuce Vaughn at third, so just ridiculous production from our draft class, which, given the amount of assets we gave up to go get C.J. Stroud, hitting on our picks, man. We absolutely hit on all of our picks. Defense rookie of the year goes to Will Anderson Jr. C.J. Stroud was runner-up for quarterback of the year. Again, I think... He just did good enough, but not great enough to get that dev trait. But, you know, fingers crossed, we might see a superstar dev for him sooner than later. Uh, for the rest of the awards, I don't think we're going to have anything on the defensive side of the ball, which we did not. But I'm happy that, generally speaking, things went very well for us here in year one of this rebuild. Let's see if we can get a sneaky playoff victory over the Atlanta Falcons. It's a tough assignment. Falcons are not a particularly fun team to play, but we handle business 28-21. Frank Reich knows how to win playoff football games. Obviously, a big part of the Philadelphia Eagles the year we won the Super Bowl. And while C.J. Stroud didn't have a stellar performance, Chuba Hubbard and Deuce Vaughn handled the show. Took the pressure off our young quarterback. That's exactly what you need to do. Now we are into the division round. We're taking on the two-seed New York Giants. Okay. 
It's an 81 overall Panthers team, 82 overall New York Giant team, NFC Championship. Holy shit, we lost 63 to 4. 63! This game sucks. This, this, what a stupid game. What? Take a look at our roster at season's end. Look at our dev traits. Uh, Jalen Hyatt up to his star dev. Uh, no other dev traits on the offense. Kind of sucks. Defensively, Ryan Burns kept his X Factor. That might be the biggest win of them all, to be completely honest with you. No other dev traits up or down, except Dante Jackson up to a superstar. Kind of cool. Honestly, all things considered, kind of cool. And, uh, yeah, we got a lot of depth in, in the secondary. Okay, Cool. What I did before we hit free agency this offseason, I just, Shaq Thompson was looking for a three-year deal. I just said, I didn't even record it because I thought it was 100% going to get shot down. I just offered him a one-year deal. He took it. So we got a nice little band-aid there, middle linebacker. One last starter we need to try to find for year two. So we're going to be aggressive in free agency. I needed wide receiver, a pass rusher, a nose tackle, and a safety. Those are kind of my five needs. Able to find a wide receiver with connections to Frank Reich, similar to Paris Campbell, who was kind of a bargain signing last year. Michael Pittman Jr. is absolutely the style of wide receiver we need. The scheme fit here in Carolina is a physical wide receiver. That is exactly what Michael Pittman is. Obviously, his relationship with Frank Reich from his time in Indy, that'd be a big get. We got Josh Uche at pass rush. Just not a great one. Just someone I've never really used in a rebuild. Why not? Uh, but there is a competitive offer there from the Falcons, so it might not be a foregone conclusion. And then we got Isaiah Simmons. He can play at safety here. And then on that one-year Band-Aid deal that we have with Shaq Thompson, we let him ride out his contract, and then we move Isaiah Simmons down to linebacker. That's kind of my thinking there. It's kind of a twofer. So let's just kind of see how all these play out. I do think a secondary safety duo of Isaiah Simmons and Jeremy Chin would be absolutely ridiculous. So we did get Simmons. We did get Michael Pittman. So we are going to be going into the draft. No first or second round pick. Hopefully there's going to be a nose tackle we can find. Hopefully... I don't know, a pass rusher? Jesus, man, we need we need a pass rusher. I might need to go find a rental here. Let's see. What do we got at available pass rusher? Um ain't not much there. Jeff Simmons, not what we're looking for. I don't need really need anyone that front three. Dorrance Armstrong does have the dev trait. Could be a could be a sneaky, a sneaky signing there. Star dev. What do we got? Left side. Don't really want to pay top dollar for Rashawn Gary. I've used him in plenty of rebuilds. Kind of want to go in another direction. Gross Matos is obviously the player that we're trying to improve upon. And he's about a 74. Ugh. Can we just bring him back on a one year? There's bids on him. God damn it, man. Just not in this because there's just no way. See, that's one position you are not finding steals in the draft. There is never a pass rusher that's a steal. Um, no bids on Epineza. Maybe we just give him a one-year deal at pass rush and hope for the best. So here are the draft. Got to wait to the third round. Thank you, CJ Stroud. And we're going to grab our nose tackle, Robert Ortiz. 6'2", 337. Looks, I mean, he's probably not going to be insane. I'm hoping for a dev trade here. But I'm expecting at least a 70 overall player with a hidden dev. Great value in the third round. We're just kind of in BPA. We got a second, third round corner that's still here in the fourth round. Uh, I'm going to be honest. He has B zone coverage, C catching. He's six foot three, and he ran a 4 3 3. That's the only reason why I'm drafting him. And hopefully he's solid depth. Don't even need a corner, but... Kind of what you got to do when you have limited picks. Just go BPA. Got a UDFA pass rusher. I mean, not overly optimistic, but you got three Bs. Don't really care about zone coverage. You're a pass rusher. Three cone and 20-yard shuttle are solid. So I, I'm thinking we might get a little bit of 91 acceleration. I'll take that. It's a good athlete. Got another UD. I like showing these drafts. The drafts where it's just like I got no premier players. Look at this. James Pounds, UDFA safety. Six foot three, 220. A hit power, A tackle. I'm in. Not bad athletically. Almost top five in every single... This guy's an outstanding value pick. As much as I like Tommy Treble at fullback, we're just BPA. We utilize a fullback, A lead block, A pass block for Craig McMichael. Has elite agility to go on with great speed, great strength. Probably a pretty damn good player. Like I'm talking 74, 75. So take a look at our draft recap. No first or second round picks, and we almost finished... 
with everybody above a 70 outside of our pass rusher that we got ortiz 71 hidden dev nose tackle gonna be a day one starter jenkins was like a second round grade player still available in the fourth round height weight speed's the only reason why we draft him he's 74 how did that guy slip appreciate it falter 69 normal def pounds was a udfa grade player actually falter was udfa grade at 69 pounds was udfa grade at 70 i mean fullbacks are fullbacks they're always udfa grade he's 75 knew when i saw the double a and the good combine he'd be around that range so all in all outstanding draft class so going into year two i completely reshaped our defense offensively Man, I am questioned. I, I like the balance here, but you almost got to understand, but just with this playbook, if we make Chuba Hubbard the third down back, it will probably help him, you know, get that dev trade up because he'll just have 3,000 yards from scrimmage. So I think we might have to do that, even though I love the, the realism of having one-two punch. I think we need to, at this point, fully commit to trying to get one of these guys to have a breakout and get to that level of, you know, Christian McCaffrey-esque. And I think we need to just go two feet in with Chuba Hubbard. Look at the rest of the offense, though. Running it back so we have chemistry and cohesion outside of the addition of Michael Pittman as our brand new wide receiver one. We're going to have Pittman and Hyde on the outside. LaVisca Chanel in the slot. Look at the defense. This is where we have a little bit of a revolving door. The front three remains the same with the addition of our top pick, Ortiz, our nose tackle, with the dev trait, which looks fairly healthy. The secondary, the corners, remain the same. We have Dante Jackson, JC Horn, and Henderson. We're going to have Horn and Henderson on the outside with Dante Jackson in the slot. Jeremy Chin stays at strong safety, but here's where I kind of thought we could maximize our talent. Hodges Tomlinson, honestly, is right now projected to potentially be like a, just a DB. Might not have the athleticism to be a slot, could potentially move to safety. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to move him to safety and gamble that with that dev trait, he will probably surpass Xavier Woods overall rating this season. We're going to have Brian Birds at edge, Shaq Thompson on one year deer at edge. We have Isaiah Simmons, who we signed as a strong safety. We're going to move him in to middle linebacker. Because I was looking at it. We had Epinez at right outside linebacker 72. We signed him on a one-year flyer. But Frankie Louvre, I knew we got a bunch of sacks last year in real life. And kind of looking at it, he's a 79 speed rusher. We had him as a middle linebacker. He kind of could do it all, just a complete linebacker. But the fact that like we had a middle linebacker with 54 man and 63 zone, I always knew all along that it was a little bit of a weird fit moving him to middle linebacker. Could play it. Could be a run defender. But I just let's throw him out there at pass rush. A little bit undersized, 6'3, 236. But I mean, so is Nolan Smith. And a lot of people are gassing him up as a potential top 10 pick at edge rush. So we're going to have Luvu at outside linebacker, Simmons at middle linebacker, Chin, Hodges, Thompson. So hopefully this is just maximizing getting our best players on the field, on the defensive side of the ball here in year two. And hopefully, for the love of God, we get a little bit of pass rush. That's all I'm asking. Looking at the specialists, we will have. Um, I guess we have Henderson in the slot. We'll go Brian Burns, Derek Brown, Draymond Jones. I'm fine with all that. Thompson and Luvu. Okay, I, I am going to switch this up. I'm going to put Thompson and Isaiah Simmons at sub linebacker. We're going to put Dante Jackson in the slot. We're going to have LaVisca Chanel in the slot. And again, we're going to go two feet in here on Chuba Hubbard. And we'll just see if he can get that superstar dev with all those big time receiving numbers. And midway point of year two. I mean, we're impressive. I, I knew the Panthers have a decent sim. Like they're decent in the sim. But beating the Chiefs 35-10, being 7-3, we are a loss behind the Saints, but we're right in the hunt for the divisional. Uh, makes you feel pretty dang solid year two, both back-to-back -back years. Is it consistent, these things? Because usually when you have like a hot year, I'm fully expecting in Madden just to be completely random and then not do anything the following season. Not necessarily the case here. So let's look at our contracts. $110 million. Uh, we have Tommy Treble. This is like an interesting one because I do think tight end could be a spot where I don't, I don't want to not bring back Tommy Treble, but also what if like Kyle Pitts or something like that's available in the open market? We would be like, ah, shit. So I think we might be best to kind of wait and see with Tommy Treble, but interest is still there. Uh, we can kind of just use Paris Campbell for what he was. He was a rental. Austin Corbett on the offensive line. You know what I say? Ride your lineman into the ground. See if we can give him a three year. We'll bump that up to five and a half and four. $28 million. He wants more money. Maybe we'll be looking for an offensive lineman. Chuba Hubbard's played awesome, so I'll see if we can get him here with a player-friendly deal. He wants more money, but I do think he's going to be popping a dev trade when this season is all said and done. Dante Jackson will offer him a three-year contract and get him in pretty much for the remainder of his peak, of his prime, of his career. Uh, Shaq Thompson's only on a one-year rental. Honestly, if we'll take another one-year rental, I have no problem with that. And maybe we'll come back at the last spot of the free agency period and maybe he'll take it like he did last year he'll take it man i'll take it and then we got derrick brown on the defensive line 
absolutely just want to keep him around. He has excelled in this new role and get him locked up for a three-year deal. All right, we smartened up, went back to the table, got Chuba Hubbard signed to a five-year deal. Also, with Austin Corbett, went back to the table, paid him a little bit more money. We got him to sign for the remainder of the rebuild. It was a little shaky to kind of end the year, and we did not get a back-to-back -back divisional title. But 10-7 is good enough to go to the playoffs and right away get to find out who the best team in the division is, like we did last season. I also love the fact that we've been beating teams that are tough to beat in the sim, as you can see, by Week 18's victory over the Dallas Cowboys, 35-21. to Let's take a look at the squad, see how we all performed here. Great from CJ Stroud. He's going to go up depth rate based off of those numbers. 4,900 yards passing, 42 touchdowns to 12 picks. Outstanding, thriving under Frank Reich and company. Chuba Hubbard, 1,100 yards, 11 touchdowns. Not too shabby, but he did get obviously a massive uptick in receiving 77 catches, 754 yards, and seven total touchdowns. So that's 1,800 yards, 18 touchdowns for Chuba. That could very bode well for a dev trade scenario. Tremble was solid. Visco is solid, Hyatt over a thousand yards and thriving our new wide receiver one, Michael Pittman, 91 catches, 1300 yards, 13 touchdowns. On the defensive side of the ball, we got 142, just insane production from Isaiah Simmons as expected. Uh, pass rush, honestly not, not that bad. I mean, still not really getting what we want out of Brian Burns, but 12 and a half sacks for Derek Brown, 13 for Draymond Jones. I, we can... I'll take that. Absolutely, we'll take that. Isaiah Simmons leading the team with four picks. So our free agency signings last year, big ones. And Isaiah Simmons and Michael Pittman thriving in their first year in Carolina. So making the most out of that. CJ Stroud, number five in the MVP race. Cool. We had no award winners. All right. Well, you don't need it, right? Because we're, we're, we're a team. It's a team effort. We don't need any individuals, and I think based off of production, anyway, CJ Stroud should be going up dev trade at the end of the year, so it doesn't really matter it's how the uh, sausage is made as long as at the end of the day we go up dev, and that's another playoff victory. We are owning. Hopefully, we, oh, I was, was, we almost had a matchup rematch against the Giants, who put 63 on our ass last year, but we handle the Saints 27-24 in overtime, a thriller, and a matchup that CJ Stroud played one of his worst games, two touchdowns, three interceptions, that's pretty how did we win michael pittman went off was it defense making plays isaiah simmons bunch of tackles brian burns had two sacks but they also had a bunch of sacks i honestly don't know how we won that game but we did i i guess it's the fact that we got 24 points unanswered shut down the saints they peaked i don't know very impressive with that victory and we won the opportunity to move on the next round and take on the one seed in the NFC. That is the Green Bay Packers, 83 overall. This could be tough. CJ Stroud needs to play a lot better than he did. We're in the championship in a rematch against the Giants. 28-14. All right, definitely what we needed. They got Hendon Hooker at quarterback. He had a huge game, 400 yards, but not CJ Stroud type huge. 262, but three touchdowns for CJ Stroud is what you want to see. All three going to Visca Chanel, our gadget player on the offense. Two sacks, Brian Burns. He got four sacks in this playoffs. He's heating up. As soon as I disrespected his sack total numbers in the regular season, he has been lights out in the playoffs, kind of playing like Frank Clark. The Super Bowl is on the line in year two against the Giants, a revenge game from last year's playoffs. And we just, we've given up over 100 points in two playoff games to the Giants as they defeat us 38 to 24. But given the makeup of our roster, we're still definitely overachieving. And this game wasn't even particularly close. We got 14 points in garbage time. God damn it. And then it just, when do the Giants get a meta playbook? Jacoby Brissett and then Marcus Mariota just shitting on us. Back to back years. It's not fair. And closing on year two, great return on investment for our dev traits. As CJ Stroud is now up to a superstar dev. Finishing top five in yards and touchdowns. Even though it was closer to five than it was for one. It still counts. And he enters year three as an 84 superstar quarterback. He's developed very nicely. Also on the offense, both Chuba Hubbard and Michael Pittman have gone from star to a superstar, which is awesome for this offense going forward. Defensively, as it relates to dev traits, front three remains the same. Ortiz's hidden dev got unveiled as a star. We have no other dev traits lost. We did gain a superstar in Isaiah Simmons, who had like 100 and almost 150 tackles and led the team in interceptions. So all in all, teams definitely trending in the right direction. 
for a Super Bowl. I mean, hell, we're one win away from making a Super Bowl appearance. We're going to have a decent amount of salary cap. We're going to be able to improve this squad. And we have our first round picks again in the draft. And much like last season, offer Shaq Thompson a one-year deal. He takes it. I'm not going to complain. Also, we clearly need to keep the glue on this team here for the next five seasons. For the free agency spot, we did have a decent amount of money, but not really anything in major positions of need. I thought maybe someone like Rousseau and then put him at edge instead of Luvu. But, you know, is he going to thrive in that role? I don't, I don't know. It doesn't seem like there's a lot of edge scheme fits. So we're just going to go back to the table with Tommy Tremble, who's the best tight end in the available free agent. And the draft class looks pretty stinky for tight end. So we'll run it back with Tremble and just kind of roll over all this salary cap into next year. I think we're going to move up. We're going to try our best to move up. This whole thing's going to based around Michael Ford, this corner going first overall. And I think it's going to be pretty tough to get two first overall picks in one draft. But at this point in the rebuild, we're not going to utilize a whole lot of the rookies we're going to get. This might be the cutoff point. And Elijah Marrow, we need a pass rusher. So I'm thinking maybe we could package some first round picks, maybe Luvu as well, and get, you know, we got the A, the double Bs. So the A finesse B power just says well-rounded edge rusher. You'd probably like to see the block shed be a little bit better, but block shed relates to the run stuffing ability. I want him to rush the passer. Look at the stats, elite agility, first in the 40-yard dash, Second in the three cone, first in the 20 yard shuttle at his pro day. I'm buying it. I, I don't, I'm this guy here is going to be probably 77 to 80 overall. Definitely hidden dev. And I think it's going to be worth trying to trade up for. But again, it's all kind of based off of if he's the second overall pick. If the first pick is going to be that corner, and I could be, we could be talking about this right now, and it's going to be nothing and get zoinked right away because he goes first overall. But I, I'm inclined to trade up to the second overall pick and the, the, the corner has been the last two mock drafts first round pick and usually that kind of holds true so first overall it does go the corner let's see if we can make a trade with the patriots so i had frankie louvre in there instead of our second round pick this year and they it was like so close like it was almost 100 percent accepted so i dropped louvre threw in our second round pick this year sell in the draft to get the second overall selection i still we might be able to move frankie louvre for like a third round pick or something this year to get recoup some of that but at second overall, we just needed edge rusher. That's, that's kind of what we're missing. And hopefully this is our guy. We could have maybe signed one in free agency. Decided to go against that. Let's utilize our draft picks. And Elijah Mara looks very good. Hidden dev trait. We're going to put him outside. Stand him up at 89 strength. Let's see if that works out. And we were able to recoup a little bit. We were able to send Frankie Louvu and our fourth round pick this year to the Green Bay Packers to get back into the second round of this year's draft class. The reason why is I found a player that looks delicious. We don't have a whole lot of scouting done, but anytime you're dealing with a player that you're getting elite acceleration, elite agility, elite change of direction, elite speed, and I don't know how many more one-year deals we're going to get Shaq Thompson. We need his successor. We're getting... A normal dev linebacker. I mean, at least he's not going to lose his dev trait by not playing a year. Hopefully, he, he's like 75 or something like that. And the last pick on my draft board is another nose tackle. Just seeing if he has better upside than the nose tackle that we drafted a year or two ago. And that is Braxton Moss, hidden dev nose out of Florida. And uh, that that is not... those those That profile picture and guy do not match up. And taking a look at our draft recap, trading a lot of assets, to landing, not generational player. We'd love to see a generational player, but uh, we still got an outstanding one in Elijah Mero. We're going to move him to defensive end and see how much that shifts or affects his rating. So he's going to be our left outside linebacker. And stays about the same. Awesome. He must have, he must have decent coverage ability. So, I mean, 59 zone coverage, 57, 57. 58 zone coverage is not bad for a guy that was classified as a defensive end so he definitely can move to an outside linebacker role and that's what we want even though he's not a perfect scheme fit uh davis even though he's normal dev 71 i'll take that braxton wants to d tackle 74 with the hit dip might actually be good enough to start right away very very happy with that draft class after two very successful seasons year three optimism is high that we did enough this year Get us over the hump and put us in the Super Bowl. I'm excited to see what two new superstars on the offense and Michael Pittman Jr. and Chuba Hubbard can bring to the squad. Offensive line is ready to run it back. Defensively, 
Second tie, we've made massive trade up in the draft, starting with CJ Stroud, now getting Mero. Uh, we kind of need that to not be a star dev it's for, you know, the assets that we gave up. So I'm cautiously optimistic. He's going to be pretty damn good. I would love to see this season either maybe a JC Horner or Jeremy Chin dev trade increase at one of those spots. And we're going to go with uh, Moss here at nose tackle. Just the fact that he's only one overall point lower than the two-year starter in Ortiz makes me guess that he's going to have a higher ceiling. So let's see what we can do here in year three to at least get back in the playoffs. All right, good news is uh, at the midway point, we're undefeated. Six and O. Oh. Awesome. Very happy with that. We actually have a breakout here week eight. Eh, might as well. Let's bring it to the live, and then we'll talk about contracts next week. CJ Stroud needs to go off against New Orleans Saints. Try to keep the winning streak alive. 400 scrimmage yards, four total touchdowns to get CJ Stroud, the man of the hour, the man that we wanted to, uh, to rebuild Carolina around. The Vegas favorite to be the selection. And I'm not even going to click that. I don't, I don't even want to click that because we, we got shit popped in a boring game that we did nothing on offense. So we're just going to eat that one on the chin and look at some contracts. $117 million worth of salary caps. So we're going to start by offering a gigantic deal to J.C. Horn. Probably overpaying. Don't really want him to go. We have Turnstile Moten, who hasn't been nearly as turnstile as he was in previous content. And he's going to bend us over for a contract? Okay. Um... I mean, honestly, looking at the rest of these guys, I'm going to be optimistic. There might be a bigger upgrade than Draymond Jones for that front three. Uh, maybe if he takes this, we'll keep Ben Powers. Yes, we do. I mean, he's getting another one spot. He probably would be the top free agent at that position. And I mean, I, we can kind of just continue to get Jack Thompson on one-year deals as long as he keeps taking it. And we'll just get him on a one-year deal right before free agency starts again. Make it three years in a row being able to do that. Uh, we went 16 and one trying to find our one loss was against the Sa that Saints loss. That was the only loss we had all year. Week eight, the one that we literally watched to try to see if our quarterback would go up dev trade. So I think it's fair to say that we get a winning combination here. Top 10 offense, number one defense in the NFL. We put it all together on the defensive side of the ball. God bless CJ Stroud was outstanding. Top five in passing yards, the leading touchdown getter. 4,900 yards, 45. That could be an MVP right there for CJ Stroud. Chuba Hubbard was solid. We, uh, Deuce Vaughn went back into that hybrid role, which was, which was fine for him. Visca Chanel, 9 and 10. 1,000 yards for Michael Pittman. 1,200 yards, 16 touchdowns for Jalen Hyde. That might be good enough to get him up to a superstar dev. Defensively, no one over 100 tackles. 14 and a half sacks, Brian Burns. 11 sacks, 20 TFLs for Derek Brown. Our rookie, Elijah Marrow. You know, not bad. 60 tackles, 6 TFLs, 8 and a half. That's not bad. It takes a lot for a rookie to make that jump. And he's at least a superstar dev. So I have no problem, you know, what we paid to trade up in the draft to secure his services. And looking at the yearly award, he might, he might still get defensive rookie of the year. What did you do? What? We have the record. We have first touchdowns. What could have Joe Burrow done? 49 and 45. 49, 45, 16, and 1. What did Joe Burrow do? 42 and 11. Um, hmm. That's a robbery. There's no other way. Like, that's a robbery for MVP. Absolute robbery. Robbery. That's a robbery as well. At least we got quarterback of the year for CJ CJ Stroud, least, you know, he's going up to X Factor. So I'm not really going to complain. But I, I would love the, uh, you know, the description of being able to say MVP in the title of this video. And that is a fucking robbery for CJ Stroud not winning the MVP here in year three of this CJ Stroud Carolina Panthers rebuild. Made the playoffs. I already know we're going to be one and done. I already know we're going to be one and done. So let's just get this over with and roll into year four. Let's just get this over with and prove me wrong. And it's actually kind of cool that in the championship game, we're taking on the one team that has been our one loss all season long. But we handled business in the divisional. 37-17 wasn't particularly close. Wasn't a shutout from CJ Stroud. Perfect game, but two touchdowns, one pick. Doing enough to outduel Justin Herbert. So as we said, it's revenge time in the next round. Championship game, Super Bowl on the line. I would actually love an opportunity 
to win this one, avenge our one loss, and then go kick the shit out of the undeserving Super Bowl favorite, NFL, MVP, Joe, Har you know, Joe Burrow, man, he should not have won in any way, shape, or form. So we are going to handle business here and get to New Orleans. Avenger one loss of the year. 18 and one. 18 and one. And look, they couldn't even get there. Even more of proof that that guy's a fraud. Couldn't get his team to the Super Bowl. Uh, there's no other way around him. And that actually is one of the biggest, like there's no fucking way we didn't win suit. We didn't win the MVP there. Like in what metric was he better? Like sometimes you see a team with a better record. It's like, okay, he had the better record. We had, you know, it's a perfect record. And we were beating him in every stat category. But luckily, CJ Stout is up to an X factor. He's been every bit the correct choice at first overall. For our dev, let's give him, uh, we'll go Dots. Dots is probably the best, the most OP ability for mr cj stroud and let's go sit front row here for the super bowl can we win the super bowl put it all together for year three all right there's a man right there cj stroud trying to win a super bowl we'll hop in too at some point this thing looks pretty bad i'm gonna tell you right now too it's saturday my kid's literally outside right now screwing at my door if we win the super bowl here i'm gonna cut the rebuild it's successful on short so i can you know spend some time this weekend we're working a little overtime here but we got work to do man Luckily, we're, we're doing pretty well. 17-10 going to the second half. Chargers, though, are not going away. They tied up at 17. Do they want me to spend time with my family? We'll figure this out if Carolina wants to or not. Third and nine. We'll go on a little bit of a shot play here. We are in field goal range to take the lead. Don't want any costly turnovers, but we want to do some damage here with Stroud. Let's send Jalen Hyatt on a streak. No safety help. We'll watch that safety. He does actually drop there. We're going to throw it anyways. Because you got, oh my God, that got to be a touchdown. Roasted him off the line. We have to settle for three. <sighs> Come on. Perfect. All right, they get the go-ahead score. Tandle business. Let's go Deuce Vaughn. You guys want to see what a five foot five running back looks like? This is it. And who says he can't move the chains? Third and eight, shot play. Clock is running. Nah, I don't really have anything we're looking for. Maybe just throw it out to Pittman. Oh my God, over this middle. LaVisca Chanel. We got a timeout, 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 timeout. Holy shit, first and goal. Come on. Come on, give me like, I'm gonna do some form of slant. Let me just finish this game. I don't like any of those play calls. Let's go mesh spot. It's a familiar playbook. It's the Panthers playbook. This is the playbook I should be the most comfortable with. This is gonna be, if you know anything, a wide open tremble. Or Visca, cross the middle. Touchdown Panthers, two seconds remain. Are they even gonna have a chance to field this? There's one play left. We got Marrow, the man we traded an entire draft to go get. Can he end it? DTR is the man under center. We got double teamed. He wins against the double team. He just lofts it up. Noodle arm would have looked like a Keith Taylor pick. But it took us three seasons, a 16 in one year for CJ Stroud and the Carolina Panthers. And they our super bowl champions i'll tell you right now guys 500 likes on this video and tonight i will record a bears rebuild to do tomorrow that'll be my that'll be my deal i won't play a sheikah island in call of duty i'll, I'll, I'll stop getting dubs in a sheikah island and, I, and I'll, I'll play a little chicago bears rebuild see what life looks like for the bears with dj moore the number nine pick multiple draft picks next season 500 likes. That's very attainable, very reasonable. Should be a layup. But enjoy this while it's here. What a success. We are first Carolina Panthers rebuild of the year. And C.J. Stroud, the man who very well could be the number one overall pick in a month's time, was simply outstanding. Should have been the MVP. Well, I will take a Super Bowl over an MVP. Thank you guys very much 
for watching today's video. As always, your first time stopping by, don't be afraid to hit that subscribe button. Smash the like button if you enjoyed. And I'll see you guys back here tomorrow.